Since basketball is one of the largest professional sports in the world, the players that become big stars in the NBA most of the time get treated like celebrities. They get put in a role where people look up to them and expect them to be role models. But just because they're put in this position and that they have good basketball skills doesn't mean they have good people skills. Because there's been a lot of great NBA players that off the court and even on the court are flat out jerks. And today we're looking at 10 of them. The 10 meanest players in NBA history. Based on their on court actions, stories that have been told about them, or any public information that's out there. Starting with number 10, Blake Griffin. There's a lot of people that could have made it into this number 10 spot, but I decided to go with Blake, and here's why. After winning the dunk contest, Blake became an instant fan favorite, but since then, he's kind of turned out to be a d It first started with the incident of him punching the Clippers equipment manager in the face at a restaurant in Toronto and breaking his own hand. And then there was the falling out with Chris Paul after the two used to be close. And we can't blame all of that on Blake because there's a lot that went into it. But when things start to pile up, it can make that person look bad. And now there's the situation with his ex-girlfriend where he was accused of abandoning her and their two children to be with Kendall Jenner. Especially because Blake Griffin was seen with Kendall just weeks after he canceled his wedding day with his ex-girlfriend. And has even been sued by her for not paying child support along with a lot of other things. Keep in mind though that these are only accusations by his ex-girlfriend and they are his own private issues, but like I said when all these things start to add up, it starts to make him look like a bad person. Number 9 Rajon Rondo Ever since he debuted in Boston, Rondo's been described as a jerk with a huge ego by fans, coaches, and Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. And it was something that clearly followed him through the rest of his career, like when he was on the Mavs and started yelling back and forth with Rick Carlisle in the middle of a game which led to a one game suspension. And then when he caught a lot of heat for calling an NBA referee a fat <laughs> while he was on the Kings. And most recently when he gave the Pelicans 5 minutes to offer him a better contract than the Lakers before he signed with them instead. And these are just a few examples of why he's been labeled as a cocky guy with an attitude problem. Number 8, Latrell Sprewell. Sprewell was a talented player, but just a bad dude personally. It all started early on when he infamously choked out and punched his head coach in practice for telling him to make better passes. But even then, that 68 game suspension wasn't enough of a lesson for him because he'd get into another fight in practice with Jerome Kersey. Got kicked out, came back with a 2x4, and got kicked out again and threatened to come back with a gun. And then on top of all of that, he turned down a 3 year, $21 million contract because he said it wasn't enough to feed his family. You serious? Which led to him never getting another contract offer again. Number 7. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Kareem's without a doubt a top 5 player, and most people even have him as high as the top 3 player of all time. But just because he was great on the court, doesn't mean he was great off the court. Because during his playing days, he was one of the media's least favorite players. He was a real introverted guy that always hated the media, the post game interviews, reporters, and really didn't care for fans. In Magic Johnson's book, he wrote about how when he was a ball boy as a kid and asked Kareem for an autograph, he ignored him and walked away. And on top of things like that, Kareem would refuse to talk to any reporter who acted too happy or excited when they met him or that tried to give him a hug and would constantly do things like refusing to stop reading the newspaper when he was being interviewed. He always felt that the media was out to get him and always tried to twist athletes words around to make money. Today, Kareem said that he regrets acting that way, but that hasn't stopped teams from refusing to offer him jobs that he's been extremely interested in. Like how he's been trying to become an NBA head coach since 1999. Number 6, Dennis Rodman. On the court, Dennis Rodman made a reputation for being a great hustle guy and an all-time great rebounder and defender. But he was also known for fighting players, getting under other players' skin, headbutting a referee, and kicking a cameraman for no real reason. The headbutt was more of a tap, but it still shouldn't have happened, and it did cost Rodman $200,000. 
and then for tripping over a camera, he kicked a cameraman with a low blow that put the man face down on the ground for a solid 10 minutes. And that cost Dennis Rodman an 11 game suspension. And then on top of all of that, he's been arrested for domestic violence twice and became friends with the guy who wanted to take out the entire United States. Number 5, Kevin Garnett. Most NBA players use trash talking to get into other players' heads to try to get an advantage, but KG's a different kind of guy because he would just randomly say the most hurtful personal things possible to try and destroy certain grown men's existence. He called Charlie Villanueva a cancer patient, wished Team Duncan a happy Mother's Day on Mother's Day knowing that his mom had already passed away, told Carmelo Anthony his wife tasted like honey nut Cheerios, and has made two grown men cry on the court. And even during one game, in Joakim Noah's rookie season, waiting for a player to shoot free throws, Noah told Garnett that he was his favorite player as a kid and that he had his poster on the wall. And KG responded with two words, F*** you. Number 4, Kobe Bryant. The main reason Kobe catches a lot of hate is because he can come off as extremely arrogant and cocky. But on top of that, there was this case back in 2003 where a lot of people still think he was guilty but got off easy because he was an athlete. And then on top of that, Kobe was extremely competitive and has admitted that he really didn't know how to balance that and pushing his teammates to get better. Which led to most of them thinking he was a real d like when he told Smush Parker he wasn't even allowed to talk to him unless he played better or when he famously drove Shaq out of LA. And he's been known to yell and cuss at his teammates in practice and not care for them at all until they prove themselves to him. Number 3, Ron Artest. Does anything really need to be said here? Nope. All right, I know, but we'll make it quick. All right, so there's the obvious case of the malice at the palace where Artest beats up two fans, which instantly labeled him as a bad guy for the rest of his career. But a lot of that wasn't really his fault to be honest. I mean, punching someone in the face is always your fault. But the point is, he put a semi-hard foul on Ben Wallace and in return got shoved the length of Sam Cassell's forehead across the court. And even then decided to play it cool and just chill out on the commentator's table. But then the beer cup hits him. And then he runs up and starts to beat down the wrong fan. Okay, so that whole thing's on him. But he did try to play it cool. And he did almost knock the second fan out. But that fan ran onto the court looking ready to fight our test anyways. But who are we kidding? This is the list of the 10 meanest players. And Ron Artest has proved that he belongs here by being one of the players most ready to fight at all times. And oh yeah, almost knocking James Harden's head off of his shoulders. Number 2, Carl Malone. If you see my Where Are They Now Carl Malone video, you might know where this one is headed. So in 1980, when Carl Malone was 17, he had twins with a woman named Benita Ford. And then three years later, when he was 20, he did the dirty with a girl named Gloria Bell, who was 13 years old. Then in 1998, 18 years after the twins were born, a newspaper article came out revealing to the public that they were his kids. So as a result, only after the article came out, Carl Malone met the twins for the first time, who were now 18 years old. And since then, he's kept a good relationship with them and has called them part of his family. But as for his other son he had when he was 20, well, he did turn out to be an NFL player, but Carl Malone has never even publicly talked about him and has only ever met him once when he went to one of Carl Malone's signings after graduating high school, only for Malone to tell him it was too late for them to have a relationship. Like, what? How can you say it was too late after you were the one that didn't try? Number 1. Michael Jordan. MJ might be the NBA's greatest player of all time, but sadly he's the NBA's greatest jerk of all time too. And the two go hand in hand pretty well, because it's common knowledge that Jordan was the most competitive player of all time, but he'd constantly take things too far, whether it was on the court or in his personal life. There's so many stories out there of why Michael Jordan is a terrible person, and there's enough to make an entire video on them alone. But since we don't have that much time, I'm gonna quickly name them off. He's ruined Muggsy Bogues, Rodney McRae, and possibly Kwame Brown's entire careers with just his trash talk. 
He told the rapper he'd only take a picture with him for $15,000, got beat by Chuck Daly in a friendly game of golf, so he banged on his door at 6am the next morning until he woke up to play him again so Jordan could win. He's punched multiple teammates in the face, including Steve Kerr, roasted everyone from his past in his Hall of Fame speech instead of thanking them, defriended Charles Barkley because he called him a terrible GM, and even cheated to beat an old lady in a game of cards. And shockingly, well, maybe not. These aren't even all the stories out there that prove MJ is a terrible person. Jordan can be your idol on the court, but he probably shouldn't be off the court. And there you have it, the 10 meanest players in NBA history. This video might have made you lose respect for some of your favorite players, but these stories had to be put out there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.